So the first step, if you're going to develop any kind of opportunity, is you're going to need to be able to get your foot in the door. So the first thing that you want to, I mean, today is like, it's amazing how fast you can actually get your foot in the door. We've got LinkedIn. You've got Facebook that you can find out about people. We've got email. I mean, literally, it, it can be pretty fast. But my favorite has always been, I'm a face-to-face -face guy or a phone call guy. So typically, I'll go, like when I built the magazine, the thing I did was I looked at my competitors, I looked at the magazine, I looked at all the different ads that, the, that people were placing on those competitor magazines, and then I looked at who their competitors were that weren't in the magazine, that spent the same amount of money, and I went and knocked on the door. And I asked to talk to the person that was in charge that basically placed the money for the ads. And then I kept their business card. I made a list of them and I followed up with them. Some of them 10, 20, 30 follow-ups. Because sales is all really about follow-ups. Breaking the ice is one thing. But following up and really presenting the value, showing what you're going to produce. For me, that magazine in one month, well actually three weeks, I sold over $120,000 worth of advertising in one month. And literally started the, the magazine with absolutely no money because my production cost was $2,800 to actually produce the magazine, actually print it, and it cost me about $4,300 to actually place the magazine. So out of the gate, with just the sales in three weeks, I was able to publish a magazine for over a year. I had already booked all the revenue and was positive $3,000. What did it come from? I went door after door after door, knocking on it, talking to them, and I was relentless. So you can't count on all this. The thing is to use all technology. What I'm talking about may sound old school, business cards, meeting people in person, the phone, like literally the phone, right? And all the new stuff that we have. The reality is if you don't use all technology, right? If you think something is old, it's been working. So it works for some people and some of the newer technology doesn't, doesn't convert. You got to remember what you're trying to do is get the person to be able to show what you're going to do. You, if you can't show the product and people don't, you don't get the attention and they don't see what it is that you're going to be selling, then how are they going to be able to buy it, right? And if it's what they need, what they should have, what a service that will better their life and improve the quality of their business or their life, like it's up to you to show them that value. And it, whatever technology you gotta use, even if it's old school technology, like your face and a phone, right? And it's my favorite because I love people. I love to engage with people. And it's so, it's so much fun when you find somebody that is actually looking for your product or service and you showed up and they go, oh, this is what, this is meant to be, right? And this is a numbers game. So you have to see the people, you have to show the product, and you have to create value and actually show the value to people. And if you can't, then pivot, do something else. But if you can't sell it, which is the first, I mean, any opportunity is just an opportunity. If you don't know how to sell that opportunity, then you won't be able to convert that opportunity into cash. Because opportunity by itself, it's just an opportunity. But you actually taking that opportunity and turning it into a business, that's a skill, right? And you can do it. You can do it. Just do it. It's that simple. So when I was talking about the magazine that I published in um, 2001 and on uh, until the crash, uh, this was the business plan I wrote and um, actually did all this stuff on my Mac back in the day in uh, 1988, and I put this on the shelf. I wrote up the, the full plan and put it up there. Here's what the layout of the front of the magazine. It's black and white. Did this ad about how people could fill it out and they could place their thing here. A 24-hour hotline, we'd actually answer the phone for you, take a message, and then at the time, we would actually text, um, uh, send you out the actual uh, information through, through voicemail. Um, it was a pretty archaic system. But this answering system, there would be 24-hour operators that would basically answer the phone for you. 
and answer questions about your property. Then it had all the different property profiles, all the different stuff in there. Had the map of the whole area that I was going to be um, putting magazines in. The different ads. Um, then I had my ad schedule. Then I, I wrote my business plan. You can see I wrote all kinds of stuff over it. The executive outline, the address, the guides and contracts, all, all the different stuff. Um, then I actually, based on 2,500 homes, if I did that, I made about $4,590 is what I figured I would, I would make, right? If I sold 50 ads in it overall, I figured I'd make about 10,000 per month. If I sold 75, it was about 14,000, right? And if I did 100, then it would be 18,000. And I had my advertising, I had all my stuff broken down there as far as cost. If you look at one of the pages, what the guidelines would cost, what I would charge, the signs, the magazine, the web, uh, printing, the typesetting, the digitizer, gas and time distribution, uh, the 24-hour hotline, what that would cost for each, each home. Uh, they had an MLS at the time, which was a home MLS, which um, I'll show you here in a second. So at all those total costs in there, I had um, wrote up all the different numbers, all my ads. I was 18 years old, did a, kind of a graph. You can see it's a total old school. This is uh, my opening costs. So it showed if I had 25 homes, that would be my overhead was the one in black. Uh, the representatives was the, the uh, kind of cross-haired one and the owner, that was me. I'd make about 7% on 25 homes. If I had 50 homes, literally, I mean, you could see the drastic difference. My reps, 25%. Overhead, um, this is the owner section now, was 26%. And now overhead was a little bit more than 52%, rather than almost eating the whole pie, right? And then at 75 homes, overhead was 47%. My share went up to 51%, and then the reps was 21. And if I did 100 homes, right, 52%, 25%, obviously these numbers were much bigger. Um, the pie kind of leveled off the overhead at more than 52%, no matter what, um, no matter how many homes at that point I went up to. But my revenue went up from 7% to 25%. So then I had everything mapped out, wrote all about the sign, what colors they were going to be, um, all the different aspects of it, um, all my, what I wanted, how the office layout was going to be, the seminar to teach people how to do it, the sales strategy, management strategy. Um, then over here I had kind of the layout of the business card, um, the script that people would say when they call. This was basically the, um, the actual uh, like MLS listing tips. So I had a guide that they could do. And then at the time there was a company called AdMax. This is in 1988. And they basically had this typeset printed list of all the homes that were being sold on their own. Look at that. This was max. This was advertising technology, the dot matrix on a daisy chain printer back in 1988. This is what we got, right? So you had the single family home, the person, the phone number, everything. So I had a list of all the people. This was my target market, right? These were the people that I was going to sell to, why you should sell your own home without a broker, right? And then this was my, um, basically my telephone answering service that I was using. Um, then this is the printer that I was going to use, Alonzo. This is 1988. And then here's the list of all the stores that I would be in. Every single store. Here's the fictitious name I filed, July 1st, 1988. Uh, here's my state registration for a service mark. So I was going to service market so that that was going to be the key to getting all across the country and copy the magazine. And then um, one of the things was I would go in and tell them about beyond advertising, which would help them with postcards and all that kind of stuff. 
and then I would get them into the magazine to buy magazine stuff. And then here was the name of my company at the time, Cartwright International Marketing Company. You see that's my middle name, Eddie Cartwright. That's what my family calls me. So, But yeah, and I had that design logo. My friend at uh, 15 years old designed that Cartwright uh, International Marketing there. So, And I just put it on a shelf um, and got into other things. So, But then resurrected it.